outreach, a uh, helmsman on port tack on Emirates Team New Zealand. Nathan, first day on the water with the AC40 here in Barcelona with Te Kakahi. How did it go? It was a good day. It was one of those perfect days in Barcelona where the breeze built quite quickly and um, you know, we've seen the other guys out sailing their 40s here and um, today was our first day in the 40 itself. It only got here a couple of days ago, so for the team to turn it around so quickly to get it ready for today was, was awesome. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's quite different to the 75, but um, yeah, we had a lot of fun sailing it today. So today, after sailing for 10 minutes more or less, we had to come back into the port, lower the jib and make a couple adjustments or, or something like that. Could you explain a little bit what happened and what, what that involved? Yeah, the, some of the battens weren't sitting perfectly on the forestay on the jib. So we, we did like an initial commissioning lap and um, normally we want to stop after five or ten minutes just to check the whole system. So it's a bit bumpy out there for the 40s to bring a chase bit alongside. So we just sailed back in and um, yeah, went jib up and down and, and fixed that problem and then had a full look through the, the boat and everything was running fine. So then, uh, yeah, we went back out and for another hour or so of sailing. Okay. And uh, looking forward, now that you have the, the two boats here, how are you go how are you going how is the administration going to be and, and how are, how are you going to organize the trainings? When are you going to be training with the AC seventy five, when with the AC forty? Is the focus now going to be back on, on the development and testing of different different components or are you going to be spending most of the time on the AC seventy five? I just think we're really fortunate to have both options right now. We've got the 75, which is about the venue development and equipment development, making sure we're still learning how to sail that boat here. And then the 40 now is, you know, for race development. So, you know, the Villanova event's coming up in September, so our focus will be using the 40 to get ready for the race training. So, um, you know, we can now pick the weather and work out what we want to do in different wind conditions. and. Uh, it feels like the 40s get a bit stretched when it gets a bit breezy and the waves get a bit big so we can sort of take the 75 on those days and when it's flatter and lighter take the 40 but honestly now we're in a position where we can take either boat out sailing and um, you know we have a, a reasonable list of things we want to learn while we're up here in Barcelona. Some of it's on the little boat, some of it's on the big boat and of course um, you know the, the 40s will be eventually racing all together next month so you know, we just sort of look at the priorities for the week, look at the forecast and, and make a plan from there. And Ainsley, you've been helming on both sides of the boat today, um, little of little of both. Um, talk to me about the conditions out there. It was bumpy, but maybe not as bumpy as we've seen here. Yeah, it was a beautiful day for sailing. High teens did 20 knots and yeah, a bit of a seaway out there. Not, like you said, not as bad as we, as we have seen. So yeah, it's really great conditions. I think if we get conditions like that during the camp, it's gonna be a spectacular event. We saw you on the J4 and then the J5 today. Talk to me about the difference between those two sails. How different did the boat feel? Well, like any other boat, you're just going up through those coves of headsails as, as the breeze comes up. And you know, these boats, it's, it's always seems ever more critical with the boat speeds being as high as they are. So just trying to work through different settings. Obviously the boat handling in the sea state, again, is, be, is proving to be really critical. 
So just time on the water in these conditions is what we're looking for and just, you know, understanding the performance of the boat, but also fine tuning those, uh, the sailor techniques and, and the, the HMI that helps us to control the boat in a straight line and, and around the manoeuvres. The boat can look, all the boats that we've seen out there can look quite precarious in the waves, the balance between flying too high, flying too low. Can you talk about that a little bit? What's the, what's the decision that you make? Well, it's the challenge that everyone is finding, and expectedly so, in the, in the sea state. It's very hard to get really accurate flight control. So, you know, where's the sweet spot there, you know, between having too much immersion and slowing the boat down, but not falling off the foil. And again, the, the control systems come into that a little bit. The sailor technique, just time on the water, getting used to the sea states out here and, and trying to do a better job on that. And of course, the design of the, the hull and the, and the foils. Uh, so a lot that goes into it, into the performance in these conditions and for sure plenty of performance still on the table I'd say. Is it safer to fly lower or, or more, more dangerous? Well, yeah, it's, it, it's in terms of the, the foil interaction, if it starts getting, you know, you start getting too much piercing um, in the sea state, it can get difficult. That said, you know, if you dig the hull in too much, you're going to slow down as well. So it's finding that, that happy sweet spot, that middle ground where you feel like you've got enough control with the foil, but you're not digging the hull in. So, yeah, again, that's, that's what all of the teams, no doubt, are trying to find that optimum. So let's talk about the team being in Barcelona now, Ben. Is it a, a new phase? You're, you're leading this team. You feel like you're moving into a new phase with the campaign? It's really great to be here in Barcelona, to have the teams here as well. Of course, it just adds a little, you know, set sense of, uh, of, of uh, excitement, really. That, OK, we've still got 12 months until the event, but just to have everyone out here racing on the same patch of water or training on the same patch of water, uh, it's uh, going to be, I think, you know, this time next year, Barcelona is going to be an in incredible event. So, as a team, we're very happy to be here and excited. We've got a, a good facility. The team have done a, a really good job getting that together, and it will be a fantastic base for us over the next 12 months. We're here with Barnabé Delaz, member on board Alinghi Rebel Racing. So can you just tell us a little bit what it's like pumping oil compared to cycling a road bike? You know, how does that feel uh, we said, you know, we said with momentum? And... We said we're pumping oil. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> so, how, so what is it like? You know, no, you on the board, it's, it's, um, it's, it's similar in some ways, different in some other ways, obviously. Uh, it's a leg motion, so, so that stays very similar, but then it's not like your typical uh, gear shifting. It's a bit different than that, so that's, that's and, but the main difference is the effort. It's a lot of, uh, um, of different type of, uh, of push, where our cycling is much more, you know, you go up a, a pass and, and you go up a mountain and it's always the same, so. Do you have oval chain rings to help? Pedal through the dead spots. Oh, that's a personal it's... issue, just like Chris Froome, he had it, but not all the tour had it, so you can choose. <laughs> Does that mean some of you guys have it and some don't on the boat? Uh, they could if they wanted to. And so, how about cyclo rotations, especially in the strong winds? How often do you rotate the cyclos? 
Uh, we're trying. We 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 still uh, trialing that. Um, but the idea would be to to split the days in two when we when we have um, when we have strong days uh, with a lot of laps. Um, today we didn't swap because we knew we were going to do a lot of uh, commissioning. So so that's manageable for us to stay all day on board. But hopefully when when we'll do a lot of laps, we will swap halfway through. After how much time do you reckon is a uh, well, you know, time like to half, swap? Halfway if we if we're out four hours after two hours. So that's a uh, maybe. Yeah, a few hours, like you mentioned. So Yves Courvoisier Kourvois, Yves was on the board, on the boat today. What was yeah. he? What was he looking out for? Uh, I think again, uh, good to have someone from the the engineer team um, on board after a long time off the water to make sure everything is uh, working according to plan and and uh, can give direct feedback to the team uh, in the offices.